Exercise 5. In this exercise, we learn how to use the assembly bottom-up method inside Creo. As you can see here, this is a part, um, it's a U-joint, and we're going to go ahead and see how to assemble it. And once it's all put together, we could go to the drag component tool up here, click on the handle, and rotate it around and see dynamic assembly motion, how it kind of interacts with each, with each component. So let's take a look how that's done. Let's go to File, New, Assembly, and call this E5, and hit OK. We begin by going to the Assemble toolbar up here and clicking on it. Browse for the, your sample files, ProE Exercise 5 folder or just the exercise 5 folder and find a part called the bracket and hit open. Now that will drop in but take a look here we want to make sure if we turn on the CSYS display you can see that it's dropped in over here there are manipulator handles to drag it around and relocate it but it's just kind of more of a manual eyeballing of sorts. You could also rotate it and such with those manipulator handles. But what we want to do here is we actually want to get it to where it's locked into an alignment with the assembly CSYS. So instead of automatic, go ahead and click on that little arrow and find default. On your midterm exam, you'll also want to use this. And what it does is it locks both CSYSs on top of each other. And when you're done, you can hit the green check mark. I'm going to turn off the CSYS display. Now, I'm going to go ahead and go to Assemble again, and this time we're going to find the yoke male. Hit Open. This one, what we want to do is we're going to go ahead and select the cylindrical face, and then select the hole that we want to drop it into. And it should align itself vertically. Uh, but not, actually, now we want to align this top face and have it contact the underside face of the bracket. So you could go ahead and just select that face there. Oops. Rotate it out of view there. I had to go to the AB button and bring it back. And then this bottom face. We connect those, but you'll notice it stays at the distance that it was at. Uh, up here you could click on distance, and instead of distance you could go with coincident. And that will attach the two parts. Now by doing this we've been removing the degrees of freedom. As you can see here, the little manipulator handle, the colors start changing gray. And when they start changing gray, that means you can't move them anymore in those areas. But notice there's a green band around it. If you grab the green band, you could still rotate and spin it. Hit the green check mark. We do still want to maintain some of that ability for it to rotate like that. Now, if you go to drag component, you could click on the component anywhere on the surface and release it and then move it with your just moving your pointer left, right, up, and down. Okay. What I'd like you to do is kind of align it so that it looks like the this front little face here is parallel with this face. Now we're not adding a, a real mate for that, but we just wanted to get it close to that. Because when we assemble the next component, we want to be able to see it easier. So this next component is called the spider. So I went to assemble, click on the spider, and hit open. And with this, we're going to first align the hole that's on the side here. Go ahead and click on the surface of the hole. And then select one of these holes on the leg of the yoke. It will align it concentric. Now we could move this in closer. And we could, we could say, oh yeah, you know, let's go ahead and select this face now. And we want it to stick to this face. Again, go with coincident. Okay, and now you'll see that there's a red band left over on the manipulator handle. You can drag this up and down. So those are the degrees of freedom that remain there. Hit the green check mark to apply. Now we're going to go ahead and insert another part. So we go to assemble and find the yoke female and hit open. Now with this one, we actually want this to be this blade to be face down. It's going to actually go in alignment with this angled plate on the bracket. So you could grab the manipulator handle and just drag it down a little bit. We could have done that later on too, but uh, this might make a little bit more sense when we select this face of this hole here. 
and we want to align it to this face. Now, to get the faces on the inside, we might have to actually grab this little blue manipulator handle and drag it out. And go ahead and select this face here and align it to this face. And again, uh, you could actually do it here too. You could click on distance, a little text. And instead of distance, you could select coincident. Hit the green check. Uh, actually, don't hit the green check mark yet. If you did hit the green check, actually, let's do that just to see what happens. Hit the green check mark, and now you see it, we forgot to add the last mate, which is the underside surface of this blade, which is going to basically be in alignment parallel to the surface. To get back to that, or any time you need to edit one of these, you just simply right-click, and you have to edit the definition. And so with this now, we could go ahead and add where we left off. Now, if you want to see the details of what you're, you've been adding, you could click on placement. And you'll see that we have a coincident, there's a second coincident, and then we want to add a new constraint. So you could add these kind of a more manual method if you really want to see what's happening and what you selected for each. And you could also delete out of there what you've added if there is something selected, like if I were to select this face. I don't want that. I could right click over here and remove it and then select the face I do want. Okay, so select this face and then this face here. And it should add it by a distance. Now it says zero, 0, but if I actually went to a couple more decimal places, you'd see it's like 0 0.005 or something. Um, what we might want to do actually is just go with parallel and hit the green check mark to apply. Okay, now here's if you want to go to drag component, you could click on like this top edge and drag it around. If for some reason it's not rotating, it could be because there was an option that wasn't that didn't automatically get turned off. And you'd go to the very top, see these little squares to the left of each one of this, the yolk spider, the yolk female. If you right click on the the very first one at the top and edit the definition, and then go to placement here. You might have to uncheck Allow Assumptions. If, it, if Allow Assumptions is turned on, it constrains it, and then you're not able to move it. But in this case, we, we didn't have that issue. But what you might have to do with each one, so you hit Apply, and then eventually um, there's usually two little blocks if Allow Assumptions is on, on any of those. And then you right-click and then edit the definition and turn off Allow Assumptions on all of those. And then, then it will free it up, most likely. If not, there might be something else where you might want to actually just delete the part and then reinsert them. It's good practice regardless. Okay, now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to Assemble and we're going to add the U-joint pin 1 and hit Open. For this one, just select the length of the shaft, not the ends, but select the length of it and then click on the hole that's over here on the yoke female. You'll see it aligns. Now we could grab the little manipulator handle and drag this out a little bit if it's stuck inside there. And now we're going to go ahead and go to placement and we're going to add a new constraint. You didn't necessarily have to go to placement but it's sometimes helpful if you're selecting items. So click on this face and then see this little flat face here on the a spider. We actually want it to offset by a distance. So click on that surface. Make sure it's not a perpendicular face. If it is, remember, you could right-click up here and remove it. But once you have that distance here, you could click over here on Offset and type in 0.35. And that will align it to where it's nearly flush with the yoke. Let's go ahead and try that a couple more times. Go to Assemble. Now select the U-joint pin 2. If you want to see previews of any of these, you can hit the Preview button and you can see the preview below and even rotate those around. See there, there's U joint pin one. We want U joint pin two, the red one. Hit open. And you can do the same thing over here. I'm going to grab the manipulator handle, get it kind of get it closer. Okay, and now I could select the length of the shaft and the hole. And then select this end face here to the yellow face that's parallel to it on the spider. And then you could double click. Um, on distance actually there and actually I'm not seeing it here but you usually have the ability there it is there's the dimension just double click on the dimension and type in or if you hit the little arrow it should remember 0.35 
So you could type it in manually or hit the little arrow. Hit apply. Bring in another U joint pin too. This one, bring it closer to the opposite side. It'll make your life a little bit easier versus having if it lands on the same side as the other pin. Okay, and now I accidentally middle clicked twice, which got me out of the tool. So now it's just floating there. So to get back in, you just right click on that over here, edit the definition, and now we can select our faces and continue on. So I'm going to select this face here, like the shaft, to the hole, and then this end face to the flat parallel face on the spider. And if you double click on the dimension, hit the little arrow to the right of it, you'll find 0.35. Now, for some reason, if it is stuck in the middle of your model, remember before you type this value, and you can drag it in and out with the manipulator handle here. But go ahead and apply that. Finally, we're going to go ahead and add a subassembly. Same place. You just go to Assemble and find over here the crank assembly. This is a subassembly that consists itself of three parts that are already mated. Let's hit Open. We'll drag that up higher here. And to the right. We could even rotate it. If you rotate it so it's backwards, it might actually align a little bit better because there's two flats that we want to align. And if it's uh, it gets it goes to the closest face, and unfortunately it might go parallel, but it's flipped 180 degrees. Um, so what we want to do is kind of rotate that around ahead of time. And now we could go ahead and select uh, the length of the shaft that you see right here to this surface of the shaft, not the flat. Be careful, you don't want to select the flat by accident. And that should align. And now if you rotate these around, first of all you could select this flat face now, and then rotate it around so you can get the flat face on the inside of that hole. And that should align. And finally, the bottom underside face here needs to align by a distance to this face. And go ahead and type in double click on this dimension and type in 0 0.04 and hit apply. If we go to AB and go to standard orientation, brings it all in. And now we could go to drag component and test it out. Click on this part on the edge, release it, and then move your pointer around in a small circular motion. And it should simulate dynamic assembly motion. If any of the parts are flying out of the side, not to worry. What you can do is you can either edit them, just find the part, you can actually right click on them here and find out where they are. We'll highlight each one in the feature tree and then right click on that part and edit the definition. With this you're able to manipulate or change things by going to placement. You can see the list of different mates. If you have multiple mates, more than three, usually that's a bad sign. You can just go ahead and you could click on the ones you don't want with the right mouse button and hit delete and then re-add them. And that completes exercise five.